I mean, this is just a pleasure to like meet you virtually because I've sort of I've been following your career and you're like one of my idols. So I just oh trying to get that gosh. out of the way. It's like great. There there are more of us doing it, uh, and more people who are closer to my age are doing it to like sort of get watch you do your thing. It's just it's wow. And we're awesome in Akhenaten. And I just want to say put that out there. Oh, so. <laughs> thank you, and it's so nice to meet you. Oh my gosh, I I, I haven't been keeping up as much as I usually do on Ryan Center Young Artists. And so when Craig and Dan told me that we were going to be talking and that you were in the program, I was just like, oh my gosh, yes, I need to meet him. And I'm so happy to to um, be on this concert with you. And I hope Let's that we can like, meet in person <laughs> sooner <laughs> than later. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I, how did you get started in music? In music? Or, or just sort of like, what was your, <laughs> this is a big question, what was your path? <laughs> um, so I actually started singing when I was really young, like five, but in church, in the church choir. So I grew up singing gospel and jazz and um, classical music didn't start, actually, classical voice didn't start until I was a senior in high school, which is actually- Oh, wow pretty late. <laughs> um, but I've always played classical piano. I've played since I was five. So classical music was in my world. But I had in high school, a final elective to take in order to graduate an arts elective. So I decided to join the choir. And my my voice teacher, my choir teacher immediately noticed a natural gift. So she suggested that I start studying privately. And I said, well, that's kind of crazy. I mean, I'm a senior. I think I'm going to go to college to play basketball. <laughs> and I don't really have the time. But with all of the time that I didn't have, I, I decided to study privately. <laughs> and so I began to study with a local teacher, voice teacher, and I just completely fell in love with, um, with classical voice. And long story short, um, I was supposed to go to college to play basketball, and I ended up kind of having to choose between music and sports. Oh, wow. So I, I, uh, it was a very traumatic experience where I, I ended up not playing basketball competitively again. And I decided to audition for conservatories with very little training. So I, I did, and I ended up going to Manhattan School of Music from my undergrad and, and I was very, very green. Um, but I, worked, I worked hard and I ended up graduating with the highest honors and then I got into Curtis in Philadelphia. And I was there for three years. It was an amazing experience, basically one-on-one -on -one, um, training. And after the three years was up, I auditioned for the Ryan Center at the Lyric Opera of Chicago. And um, that was, for me, getting into Curtis was, was a huge um, accomplishment and some, somewhat of a sign <laughs> that, um, you know, singing was something that I could actually do professionally. Mm. Uh, and then when I got into the Ryan Center, it was like, okay, this is more than a sign <laughs> because not just anyone, as you know, gets into the Ryan Center. Um, it's very competitive and it's, it's one of the best young artist programs in the world. So when I was accepted into the Ryan Center, my, my, my mind shifted a bit. Um, and singing was, was at the forefront. It, it was to me confirmed and affirmed that I had to go all in. And um, at this point, it was I was so passionate about it anyways. Um, I was ready to receive and continue to just work really hard and um, put all of my efforts into, into singing, into my voice, into my technique, into languages, and into this career. Um, so that's kind of been my journey. And I never actually, Honestly, I never expected <laughs> to be an international opera singer, but I feel like it's definitely, oh, I know it's definitely my, my calling um, and my purpose. So 
yeah, that, that's in short kind of how I got into singing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm new to you. So can you tell me um, where you're from and, and how, what was your journey to singing and the Ryan Center? I'm curious. So I was born in New York City, um, born in the Bronx, grew up in Brooklyn. Um, I was in the boys' choir of Harlem as a kid, which sort of got me started oh, with classical music. Oh, and wow. for like a couple of years, I was a boy soprano. And then my voice sort of broke and could not find my place until uh, I want to say, I think it was, there was a teacher that gave me one of the bass arias from the Messiah. And I was, I was, Thus saith the Lord, but whom may abide. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, oh, there's your voice. This is what you should be doing. But I wasn't, I was only interested in the traveling aspect of it. I like, loved living out of a suitcase, getting on planes, meeting new people, seeing new places. Um, but it, I don't think it was until like senior year where Warren Wilson really encouraged me to take a chance on opera and so i decided to apply for three conservatories again see what happens if it didn't i'd go do engineering and then call it a day and i got into wow. manners and i was like okay well if this chance exists take it and if it doesn't work out you can always go do something else um and it's funny i was prepared yet wholly unprepared for man is for a variety of reasons um which ended up with me stepping away from music for a while um because of like family and other issues and for it's like that pull of the thing that you know you're supposed to do and you try to push it away for mm. as long as you try but you can't and i a couple years later, yeah. find myself singing uh, some orchestral songs and sort of falling right back in love with a career. I just thought, well, this will never happen again for me. And it's sort of been taking the time to put the pieces together. Um, I went to Bard for grad school, finding my voice again, finding out what I want to share with the world. Um, and. It was, a, I think, a longer journey to get to the Ryan Center, but sort of getting in was the confirmation, like for me as well, okay, <laughs> this is actually possible. And there were a lot of stepping stones on the way that showed me, okay, there may be a path, but I think this was the, yes, you can do this. Now the real work wow. begins. Uh, what songs have you chosen for the, uh, the concert? I actually, I don't think I actually know everyone's. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think everyone, <laughs> everyone is singing either. Um, but I have chosen three songs. The first one is Printemps qui commence from Samson and Delilah. It's um, Delilah's first aria. And I chose this because, so I was actually in the middle of, of a run of Samson and Delilah at the Kennedy Center with Washington National Opera. It was my debut of the role um, and my house debut at the Kennedy Center. So we, we performed three shows and then COVID hit. Whoa. So I just, I felt like I was robbed. <laughs> you know, we all felt like we were robbed. And um, I felt like I was also just getting into the rhythm of, of, of the run of, of the music of how it felt in my body and it was going really really well um so when the ryan center came to me and presented this concert to me i immediately thought this is my chance to like get back to delilah <laughs> and i've sung mon coeur souffre ta voix it's kind of the more popular aria i've sung it many times um but for me this opening aria is just it's so gorgeous it's it's about springtime and even though we're in the summer it's about springtime and um kind of new possibilities and your heart awakening and i feel like honestly during this really difficult time um, of the pandemic i've actually 
gone through phases, but I have um, found many things in myself that I didn't really know were there because I've had the time. So for mm -hmm. me, it's it's also a bit of an awakening. So that's why I chose um, Delilah's first aria. And then second, I am singing Ninge Ninge, which is um, an art song by Mont Salvage. And it is about, it's in Spanish and it's about, it's a lullaby, a Spanish lullaby. Um, and in this lullaby, I am rocking my baby to sleep, but the baby happens to be a little black boy. And the, the poetry is just so beautiful and um, kind of characteristic of a young black child. I have, well, clearly I am black, but I also have a younger brother and I just remember his beautiful features when he was a child. And um, the text is just so beautiful. It talks about, um, don't worry, it's gonna be okay. Um, don't, don't be afraid of the boogeyman. And again, you know, during this, this time of um, social injustice, which is, it's not anything new, but it's just really relevant. And I kind of want to sing this lullaby to, um, to the world, but specifically to black boys and girls that might not feel so comforted at this time. Hmm. And then lastly, I have chosen to sing um, Ride on King Jesus. And it's a version that was arranged by a local composer, Sean Opeblojo. Oh, um, yes, who is on the faculty of Wheaton College. He's a dear friend of mine, an incredible, extraordinary uh, writer for The Voice. Mm -hmm. And I just love singing his music. We are working on a second album, actually, of spirituals with wow. Will Liverman a dear friend and colleague. Um, so this will be actually on our second album. And I asked him, I said, Sean, would it be okay if I debuted this <laughs> early? <laughs> uh, he said, absolutely, because we've been working on the recording for a couple of years now. And, and with COVID, it's just, yeah, it was supposed to be out by now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's, please, please present this to the world. So I thought, what a better place um, then kind of where it started professionally for me, hmm. um, then the lyric and he's, you know, based in Wheaton, which is maybe an hour away from Chicago. So it just, it, it makes sense. And it's such an incredible arrangement. And Craig Terry is a fantastic pianist. And he is just yes. like a person who I can say, Craig, let's do this. And he's just, he's so up for it, which I, is one of the many things I love about Craig. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to debut this piece and, and hopefully it'll be well received. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After, I, 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 I love all of this music. Amazing. Oh yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. He has such great music and he, he writes beautiful choral music as well. So I, I just oh. want to, I want to get his music out there and, and living composers, you know, living African American composers specifically. Uh, because their music tends to um, get left behind and unrecognized. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to use um, the lyrics, my platform, the lyrics platform to present this amazing music. So um, what have you decided to sing on this concert? So you were mentioning Craig Terry earlier and we were talking about repertoire and composers of color. We we have sung and Terrence Blanchard, of course, came up because I did, I was a part of Fire Shut Up In My Bones oh, uh, summer OTSL, which was amazing with so many amazing people. Um, I, and oh. Harry T. Burley came up and I've sung a fair amount of his spirituals and for some reason did not know that he'd written quite a bit of art song. And he introduced me to Five Songs of Florence Hope, which uh, was the pen name for uh, Adela Florence Nicholson, who is a woman writing um, as a man just to get her poetry out there into the world. And just the, the songs always talk about like unrequited love and loss. And I think I was having this conversation last summer when a lot of our stories get told, there it isn't, it's, 
it isn't just the everyday oh this is what uh this is a normal day in the life of a black person they go through love they go through loss there's uh and all the things in between and so these stories stuck out to me just to be able to say like you know we are normal human beings too that have normal everyday problems and normal joys and yeah mm, that's beautiful oh my gosh i can't wait to hear so are you singing all of the songs uh just the two are uh, worthwhile um which is her asking you know i lost this person who was dear to me was it worth it to have this love for them in the first place and the uh. answer is unequivocally yes um and the last song is sort of mourning the loss of the relationship and the, I guess the loss of innocence as well. And there's mm. a little hope in that it may come back in some form. Wow. That's, <laughs> you already like took me in. I'm ready. Wow. That's, that's just crazy. the setting of these songs and like Burley's orchestration. It's just, it's amazing. So you're performing them with the orchestra? Oh, so sorry, just with piano. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, I cannot wait to hear them. Uh, wonderful. And um, hmm, so this, this concert is actually um, very unusual. <laughs> we are singing, we're singing virtually. Um, is this your first virtual concert? Yes, I'm like so used to, if you're going to do a concert, you meet all of your collaborators, you sit down and get to know them better, or just sort of catch up. And I think this is the first time I've done a concert with a group of people who are, I don't think I've met any of them in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty different. I mean, well, I guess you know the, your fellow young artists. Um, well, even Martin Luther, I have yet to uh, oh. physically meet him. <laughs> because this is your first year in the program? Yes. I see. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's that's pretty different. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are you most excited for? I mean, and, and who are you most excited to perform with, even though we're not performing with each other? But <laughs> I was interested that I can't really choose. I, I'm I, just excited to be a part of a concert with so many artists that I look up to and respect. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Me too. Likewise, I um, I have known Lawrence Brownlee well since I started singing. I think since I was 18, and I just oh, wow. remember um, going to the Met and hearing him and thinking, "Who is this man?" <laughs> you know, because I really just didn't know much many um, current performers in opera. And so seeing him on the Met stage was just, I, it was an experience, I'll just say that. And so now he's one of my closest friends and um, it's just kind of surreal. Every time I hear him or I'm on a program with him, I'm just like, wait, you and me are on the same program? <laughs> it's really amazing. And um, Will Liverman, we kind of grew up together in terms of um, just when we started, we did Glimmerglass, the summer program together in 2009. Oh. And that was like my first big, oh, it was only, yeah, it was 11 years ago. And that was my first uh, kind of big program. And um, we became very close and very close friends. And I've just always admired his, his voice. To me, he's, he's one of the best baritones in the world. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm just so excited to collaborate with, with all of these amazing people and voices and, and also, um, just under, um, you know, to collaborate with fellow African Americans, especially during this time, I think that it's, um, it's needed. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's definitely, um, just an uplifting opportunity for, for everybody for the world um and hopefully we bring some much needed joy and and hope and inspiration yes. to people because it's it's um it's a tough time right now it definitely is um well there's a question about what are we planning to wear oh what are you planning to wear <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I, I have this blue jacket that I absolutely adore, and oh. I've been wearing it for a lot of things, so it's going to get played out. Um, that and some gray slacks. Um, I love color, and yeah. I always feel like men's wardrobe. It's like you wear this one thing, and that's it. And so I always I love to have like a, a bright splash, usually with a pocket square. Hmm. So. I like that. I like that. I'm always thinking about how men can switch it up. And um, I like what you're saying. I, what about you? Yeah, I, I'm still deciding. I mean, I was kind of in route here before I found out that it was business attire so or oh. concert attire. So I actually have a gown because <laughs> I just I have lots of gowns and I just kind of pulled one. Um, and so while it's suggested that we wear kind of like more business and not super formal, this gown that I have is kind of in between and it's um, it's also, uh, it's a solid color. It's like a, kind of like a watermelon red. Um, oh, wonderful. So I think I actually might wear that, but I might go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Socially distance <laughs> shopping, of course, and, yes. <laughs> and, and find something uh, maybe a bit less dressy. It's hard for me to not dress up. I, I either I either am really formal or like casual. <laughs> yeah, to well, dress in between. It's interesting because, so, like, the past couple of months, like, I have not had the opportunity to wear any of it, and it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I need to remember what it felt like to exist in these clothes again, even though it. It wasn't that long ago. I know, but it, it, it when, when you're in a rhythm and you kind of have a system, it's just tricky to, to, to know what it is right now, just because yeah. we have time to practice. Um, how have you been, this question, I mean, I'm, I'm just asking this question, but how have you been um, maintaining your vocal health and, and shape? <laughs> <laughs> so I think for the first month I did not sing and it was weird because at that point we were in like we had just come out of like a 12 hour tech rehearsals and we were doing a rehearsal and a show every day and all of a sudden it comes to a halt and it was weird that I could not bring myself to do the act of like physical singing and then mm. after a month i started to get stir crazy and so it was more just looking at music i don't think until the lyrics sort of came knocking again and said hey so we figured out a way to make this work because my first thought is well nothing's happening so and it was just sort of the dealing with I and mean, i guess in a way grief of not having any singing work for quite a while. I think that's where I started. And then to realize, oh, no, things may still go on. It's it sort of reignited the fire. And so it, it's difficult because I'm in an apartment and while I'm by myself, it's mm. fairly loud. But my neighbors have been very, very kind about okay. my practicing and lessons and coachings, even though I always wear headphones. Uh -huh. What about I you? <laughs> Uh, and just one question, are you, um, you all are still having coach, like regular coachings and lessons through the Ryan's Night? Yes. Uh, so it's interesting, this last week was the first week that we, I had a coaching in person, of course, socially distanced, at least 35 feet apart, uh -huh. um, with someone else in the room, which was amazing. But yeah, we've had lessons and coachings all via oh, Zoom, good. which is... Interesting, because I've had to learn a new it's, set of technology. Yeah, but it's it's, it's at least something. So that's yes. Good. <laughs> what about you? Hmm. Yeah, for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of similar in that I couldn't sing. You know, when I was in the middle of that run, which was probably, I mean, this, this past season has just been a real peak in my career. Um, so to go from like an extreme high to having it all stripped um, was really difficult and, and, and devastating. And I, it's like I went through phases 
um, the first phase was shock and disbelief. And then the second phase was like me wanting to fight back and, you know, like, no, we, we can still do this. So I was, I, I was initially like making lots of, um, kind of like virtual content. Um, but then I really got tired of that because it it just wasn't as fulfilling, you know? Mm. And, I, and I felt like, why am I doing this? <laughs> Gig after engagement after engagement was being canceled. So I just kind of was depressed for a while. And I, I accepted that and I went through, felt those emotions and then one day I thought, okay, I need to snap out of this <laughs> because, oops, sorry, because I actually, um, I miss singing and I miss uh, creating. So yeah, I've, I've been, um, I've been teaching. I've been um, doing some amazing projects. I don't know if you know, but I, I got um, an opportunity to sing in LA with the LA Philharmonic. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, with this incredible organization called Global Citizen. And uh, we did a virtual concert that raised $7 billion. <laughs> I was a part of that. Yes. Wow. Um, for, for COVID-19 relief. And it was amazing because I got to make music again. Like, it's sometimes it's, it's what I've realized that I've missed is um, actually collaboration and collaborating you know so i was able to do that again and it was just so amazing um and then under under that umbrella of of um raising funds for covid19 relief was just even more satisfying and also like being on the same program as mainstream artists that to me was oh yeah <laughs> really fun <laughs> and um and for me honestly i think that um opera could use a bit more of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, um, once I got that call, it, it kind of invigorated me. And I'm now doing a lot of interesting um, projects. Hmm. But yeah, being more intentional about like actually practicing is something that I'm doing because Whew, if you don't use it, you lose it. And, right. <laughs> uh, so I, I've gotten back into kind of a rhythm of, of, of practice. And I actually need to call my voice teacher and have some lessons. But it's been helpful to teach also because it just like enforces what I already know. Ah. So yeah, that's that's been really good. I still not the same, you know, as performing on stage. But that's why I'm so excited for this opportunity because we get to sing on stage and, nice. and, and collaborate with um, Craig, Terry and, and other pianists and musicians. And um, yeah, it's, it's a super, for me, it's amazing um, to have this opportunity again. And it's, it's for sure different than most um, Concerts. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. You know, but I think it's still, uh, I'm grateful. <laughs>